thanks everyone for being here. This is the third in a series of presentations about burnout. In the first one, we talked about an essential leadership perspective. In the second one, we talked about essential team perspectives. And today we're going down to the personal because a lot of people in IT are secretly burning out or near there. Uh, so we're going to talk about if you are that stressed or you know who, someone who is, what to do first. So these are our four topics today. We're going to do a, a, a lightning review of some of the material I talked about in the last two days, and then these three new topics. So getting clear on the problem, burnout has a scientific dimension which has stayed steady and been validated since 1981. It first came up, uh, Christina Maslach, a, a researcher, was the first person to coin these three items, and they've been researched and researched ever since. Emotional exhaustion is where you feel unable to give emotionally to other people, and the physical exhaustion that goes with this feels soul deep or bone deep. Depersonalization refers to feeling cynical or snarky or just up against a wall of not, not being able to move forward. These two feelings are very, very common in burnout. Somewhat less com common, but also very, very painful, is a sense, a new sense that what you're doing makes no difference, even if you knew before that it actually was very valuable. What I proposed in my book and on these webinars is that burnout is a type of repetitive use injury, like carpal tunnel syndrome. And this is the repetitive use. This cycle, this, this series may look familiar to many of you. Some of you may have seen it yesterday from me. This cycle is an extreme version of a healthy cycle, an extreme version of what we all do. We work and we rest. We work and we rest. We play and we rest. Uh, and so when we extreme it all the time, that's when we end up losing it, reaching the point where we feel helpless and hopeless and exhausted and cranky and uh, unavailable to our family and friends and maybe phoning it in a bit at work. That's certainly how I felt when I hit burnout. So in a repetitive use injury, you do something about it. You don't spend time on feeling guilty about it. You just do something about it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first step, if you're that stressed, or even if you're just on the way to being that stressed, is to identify your warning signs. And why do I call warning signs rumble strips? Well, you know how you're, when you're driving on a highway or a freeway, and your attention wanders a little bit, and you drift off out of the lane, and you hear that wubba, 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 wubba sound as your tires hit this, uh, the grooves in the pavement that they've put there to kind of wake you up. And you go, oh, wait a minute, I am out of my lane. I need to get back in the safe part of the driving here. That's a rumble strip. And your warning signs when you're headed toward burnout, when you're headed toward being that stressed out, are your rumble strips. So let's look at what those might be. It might be that you start to break things. Maybe you literally break things. You miss the edge of the counter when you go to put your coffee cup down, or you break the build, or you send an email that you're, you really shouldn't have sent and wouldn't have if you were feeling a little more together. I used to sprain my ankle. When I got this stressed, I would step off a curb or just trip the tiniest bit and my right ankle would just go out from under me. It was a warning sign that meant that I had not paid attention to the smaller warning signs that occurred ahead of time uh, before that happened. 
Uh, so small injuries like spraining your ankle or banging your finger. Or the other thing that may occur is that your chronic illness, if you have one, is not getting the attention that it needs. If you have diabetes or lupus or, or whatever that deserves chronic uh, daily or weekly attention to make sure that you stay on track. If you're so stressed that you're not taking care of yourself that way, things can start to get a bit out of control. Risky behaviors or losing your temper. Uh, tears. My uh, co-author, Dr. Loomis, tells a story of pulling up to work. She's a physician, and she would park on the far end of the parking lot underneath a tree where she would have a little cry before she went in and then adjust her makeup and adjust her face so that she could go in and be professional all day. But she just, it got to the point where daily, just going to work made her cry. Some people get to the point uh, that my version of this was that I used to drive to work and think, if I just ran off the road and had a little accident, like broke my leg or something, then I wouldn't have to go to work, which is crazy talk, right? It's actually surprisingly common, that kind of crazy talk. If you are in, at the point where you are not safe, if you've ignored so many stress points and so many stress warning signs that the stress warning signs are now coming as a brick up the side of your head, then you need to stop and get help and take care of yourself. So the first thing to do if the stress signs are that bad is to just stop and do self-care. And if you're thinking about driving off the road or otherwise having thoughts of serious self-harm, then please write this number down, 1-800-273-8255, 1-800-273-8255. If you ever know someone who you are concerned about, uh, this is the number you want to be giving them in terms of protecting them from self-harm. This is the suicide prevention hotline. I know people that work there. They are non-judgmental. They know what to do. One more time, 1-800-273-8255. All right, moving on to step three. You want to be taking an honest look at what you're actually asking yourself to do. How much is on your plate? And even more, how much is on your plate? I'm waking this back up again. How much is on your plate, including all your to-do lists? Some of us have a to-do list for work and a to-do list Hi there, hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over a thousand hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.